Hey everyone, it's Maggie Bite here with Vlogist Day Number Four, and um, this is a vlog about kind of um, hidden information in games, when it's good, when it's bad. So I finished up tonight uh, my third game of Nuremberg uh, at three players, and we were showing it off to a new friend who had seen my review and was curious of trying it. And this is a game with very, very little randomness. Uh, it only has some tile draw that come out of a bag. Um, and the other part of the game that seems a little bit more light is uh, you keep your money hidden under a vault and this money is trackable. So it's trackable hidden information. And we got into a discussion of, well, my friend and Brian decided that this was a horrible mechanic and that if it was trackable at one point you should keep it open. And I agree to a certain extent that some games use hidden information as a way of making the field more fair, that if you hide the information and not everyone can see how poorly they're doing, they don't know that they're out of the game, or even it's used to try and obscure the facts of the game, so if you don't know how much money you Fred over here has, you don't know how to bid on something. So that, I mean, that's a reason to keep trackable information hidden, like a power grid. So it's a bidding game, and it's trying to get it where you don't just math out the best possible solution to everything. And I think Nornberg, my belief in why there is hidden trackable information is that there is a tie break. Um, when two players are tied in the number of resources of a given craft or guild that they have, so if I have two beers and they have two beers, then we reveal our money and the person with the most money wins the tie. And I think there is this wonderful moment in the game where maybe I had six beers or something, I have the last action, I can go and sell my beer and get some cash for next round, but can I sell that extra one? Can I go down to being tied with that person? Will I have more money than them? And I think that's the kind of like feeling and tension that's evoked by having hidden information. Whereas I think a really good alternative to that that, that shows kind of what I don't care for in hidden information is Diamonds from Mike Fitzgerald. Um, I thought Diamonds was a perfectly serv serviceable game, don't get me wrong. I, I thought it was pretty fun. Um, should not have been compared to Spades on the box, but um, it, was a, it was a cool game. But it had hidden information, and so you have um, Diamonds out front that are worth one point, and Diamonds behind a screen that are worth two. And the game, and I've played probably 15 or so games of it tends to dogpile on top of the person who has a lot of points in front of their screen and forget somehow this person over here taking these diamond actions and just shoving two points after two points behind their screen. And it's trackable, it's no knowable, but I have found that that game in particular, people have a hard time choosing who's doing the best and preventing them from winning. Um, there's there's that element in a lot of games of you have to identify who's doing well, still get on your strategy, but still try and throw a wrench into theirs. And so a game like Nuremberg, I don't think that's how the hidden information would help you. I don't think it would actually identify who's doing the best in the game. So uh, we were talking tonight, and they're like, well, we should just play with it face up anyway, because you, you would know what it was. And I said, well, uh, in my opinion, no, you, you don't need that. The game, the money is not so powerful in that game that um, it's so wrecking, it's not destroying your strategy by not knowing how much money someone else has. Um, I did agree with an assessment. Um, we, we played Rococo and Nuremberg tonight. It was a really good night for gaming. And in Rococo, you are buying cloth tiles and kind of putting them face down and sometimes in the game you can play cards that will give you random fabric tiles off the top of a stack and what they were saying was that it'd be really fun and I've never done this to play a game of Rococo with any of the fabric tiles you buy from the market keep them face up in front of you and any of the ones you pull off the top face down um, that way you can kind of double check and know who can steal what dress from you 
because that, that's pretty devastating when you really only have the resources for one particular dress and you keep the cards that you need to make that dress and unfortunately someone steals it out from under you. Whereas the hidden tiles would then give you a, well they don't have the thing for the green dress right now or the green suit, but if they just pulled it off the top, if that was the perfect draw for them, then they will. And you kind of, you get that fun tension again. Um, this is just me riffing because I, I figured a, a game review a day is probably not the way to go, uh, though I have plenty to say about Rococo in general. Uh, but this is it for tonight. What do you guys think of hidden information and how much do you like to dissect games? Because I, I'm good with dissecting the game that we just played. I typically don't like dissecting the game as a whole, trying to find the best strategy or the best moves or decide how many points each action is worth. Um, I find maybe after several games or four or five plays, I'm more open to that kind of discussion, but especially a first or second play, I'd, I'd much rather have like a, a feeling of discovery as I'm trying things out and going for a new strategy. Uh, but that's all for me for now, and I will have a longer video probably tomorrow. Goodbye! Okay,